I've been to eight county fairs and one goat rodeo. I've never seen anything like that. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 zombie kills from The Walking Dead. I got the ugliest in the front. That's it. It's gotta be the brain. Did y'all know nothing? For this list, we'll be looking at the craziest, most creative, and most impactful ways human survivors took down walkers throughout the series. We'll only be looking at the main series because the spin-offs could have lists of their own. And obviously, if you aren't caught up yet, consider this your spoiler alert. What was your favorite walker slaying moment from the series? Any we missed? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Dispatching the Walker in the Well During Season 2, the group finds themselves on Herschel's farm, which seems to have all the food and safety they could want but they run into a huge issue when an undead friend finds its way into the nearby well. How long do you think it's been down there? Long enough to grow gills. We can't leave it in there. God knows what it's doing in the water. I don't gotta get it out. To make sure the survivors don't pull an opposite day and consume walker water, they concoct an elaborate plan to remove it. Don't worry about it, bud. Hey, we're gonna get you out of here in one piece. Living piece. The living part is important. A reluctant Glenn has to be lowered down into the well so they can tie a rope around their enemy and pull it out. The tense sequence ends with the walker falling apart in a memorable and disgusting scene. An understandably angry T-Dog makes sure to finish off what's left of his foe. <laughs> Jeez, we hope you weren't eating anything when you watch this. Good thing we didn't do anything stupid like shoot it. Number 19. Maggie slays with a street sign. We should go. I thought we were looking for Glenn. If he saw one of these, he would go looking for me, looking for him. After losing her relatively comfortable home at the prison and getting separated from most of her allies, Maggie becomes desperate to find her husband Glenn. She is so dead set on reuniting with him that she leaves her remaining friends and goes on a solo journey to find him. She didn't want us to come. She made her choice for her. I don't care. She's alone. When Sasha catches up with Maggie, they accidentally attract a group of walkers. A frustrated and enraged Maggie takes out her frustrations on her undead foes with a street sign. She's able to make quick work of her enemies with the sharp weapon. Although Maggie didn't get the reunion she wanted, she gave us an incredibly badass new way to slay walkers. Number 18. Daryl Pulls Out a Win Sophia! While desperately trying to find Carol's lost daughter, Sophia, Daryl endures serious pain after tumbling down a ridge and falling on one of his own arrows. One attempt to climb to the top results in another fall and disturbing visions of his brother taunting him. You're gonna die out here, little brother. And for what? Carl. I lost a little girl. Fortunately, Merle's less-than-kind words are exactly the motivation Daryl needs to fight the walker nipping at his boots. In his delirious stupor, he finds the clarity to remove the bolt that injured him and repurpose it to slay an enemy. Even when Daryl is in the direst of situations, enemy walkers do not stand a chance. Yeah, you're welcome. How's he looking? I had no idea we'd be going through the antibiotics so quickly. Number 17. Rick Wastes Winslow need to know you're real with this, that you're worth it. When Rick is forced to prove his mettle to Jadis and the Scavengers, he's thrown into a pit of garbage with a very unique walker named Winslow. Since the walker is covered with metal spikes, it's nearly impossible for Officer Friendly to get near the metallic monster. Rick even gets injured while trying to push Winslow away. This forces Mr. Grimes to get creative. The wall! Use them! After listening to Michonne's advice, he uses the surrounding trash to pin the walker. Rick cements his victory by using a piece of glass to dispatch the metallic walker. While it might not be the most flashy final attack, the unique challenges Winslow presented were enough to make its end unforgettable. You had that thing down there for someone to prove themselves? No. His name was Winslow. Number 16. Daryl Tees Up Walkers We might as well do something! I can take care of myself, and I'm gonna get a damn drink. 
after her prison home falls, Beth decides she'd like to drown her sorrows with a strong drink. She eventually finds a country club that has the drinks she's looking for, and a few hungry walkers. Fortunately, Daryl takes advantage of their upscale setting by using a golf club as a melee weapon. He takes down enemies left and right with a furious flurry of hard swings. He's such a natural with the club that we think he could qualify for an apocalyptic PGA tour. Although the drinks at the club ultimately aren't up to par for the survivors, at least we got to appreciate Daryl's amazing golfing technique. I ain't gonna have your first drink. Be no damn peach snobs. Number 15, Andrea's DIY attack. No problem, Dale. Oh, just a small matter of being stuck in the middle of nowhere with no hope of. While the group's on the move, an overworked RV and a highway pileup stops them in their tracks before a horde of undead arrives. While almost everyone else hides beneath abandoned cars, Andrea is trapped inside the vehicle with a dismantled gun and an approaching walker. When she tries to hide in the bathroom, she desperately struggles to keep herself from getting bitten. Fortunately, Dale manages to drop her a screwdriver from the roof. Andrea proceeds to give the walker an up-close and personal view of the tool. Her awesome DIY death blow showed that she didn't need a gun to take down walkers. Just a matter of time. Can't be soon enough for me. I'm still freaked out from that herd that passes by. Or whatever you'd call it. Number 14, Shredding Walkers. No! Jadis had one of the worst weeks in Walking Dead history. After betraying Rick and siding with Negan, the saviors take out every single living person in her community of scavengers. As if that wasn't bad enough, Jadis ends up alone in a junkyard surrounded by all her undead friends. What happened here? Savior. Well, how do we get out? Get out. How you got in. Upon realizing that no one is coming to save her, she resolves to put down her former comrades by way of a giant shredder. She places herself just over the gap of the shredder and leads the zombified scavengers to their demise. The resulting scene is as gruesome as it is tragic. Although her methods are incredibly effective, Jada still has to go through the painful experience of shredding everyone she cared about. You did this. This is because of you. Number 13, taking care of Sophia. I think it's time that we all start to just consider the other possibility. Shit. We're not leaving Sophia behind. I'm close to finding this girl. I just found a damn dog <laughs> two days ago. After Carol's daughter Sophia gets lost, the group spends a large part of the second season looking for her. The tension slowly rises between members of the group as they tirelessly comb the area for any trace of her. This makes it all the more heartbreaking when it turns out that Sophia has been in Herschel's barn all along. As she slowly walks towards the group, everyone is visibly shaken. Ultimately, Rick steps up and solemnly puts the reanimated Sophia down. The jarring and incredibly sad nature of her demise marked a huge turning point for the series. If someone like Sophia could die, then any of the survivors could. This is Sophia. The whole group. This one was different. Number 12, the governor eliminates a pit of walkers. I've been on the road for a couple of months. By yourself? Yeah. The governor becomes incredibly unstable after losing Woodbury. However, he's able to find some solace with a small family of survivors. He forms an especially strong connection with a girl named Megan, who resembles his daughter Penny. I'm a pirate. No way. Yeah, he caught me. When they fall into a walker trap, he proceeds to take out every single shambling enemy that dared to come near him. Each one gets a more brutal demise than the last. After using a combination of improvised weapons and his bare hands, he and Megan are the only ones left moving in the pit. If you've ever wondered how savage the governor can get, his time in the walker trap should answer your question. Anything to you. Number 11, Michonne gives the governor a penny for his thoughts. After vowing revenge on the governor for his shady actions, Michonne sneaks into his quarters and encounters a macabre scene. The governor seems to have a living captive restrained in his quarters. It's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. 
but she's soon surprised to learn that the prisoner is the governor's zombified daughter, Penny. When the governor finds the katana-wielding survivor ready to put his reanimated relative down, he expresses uncharacteristic vulnerability and begs for mercy. There's no need for her to suffer. She doesn't have needs. Although it looks like Michonne will relent for a brief moment, she swiftly puts Penny down for good. This choice leads to one iconic brawl and an even more unhinged governor. Since Penny's demise has tons of horrific consequences, it is one of the most pivotal slayings in the series. Get what you came for. Where are the rest of you people? Number 10. Daryl's Trunk Slam As Daryl is traveling with his older brother Merle, they hear screams and shots. Hey, man, I ain't wasting my voice. A couple of strangers ain't never cooked me a meal or flaciated my piece. While the eldest sibling refuses to help, the younger man rushes to the aid of a family. After taking down a few walkers, Daryl sees one making its way through the back of a vehicle that contains two innocent people. He wastes no time before dragging the walker out by its ankles and finishing it off with the trunk door. His save was both stylish and a great way to aptly demonstrate the difference between the two brothers. Get out of the car. I know you're not talking to me, brother. Get in your car and get the hell out of here. While Merle might be willing to leave people to walkers, Daryl's always ready to take the undead down in the coolest ways possible. They were rude is what they were. Rude and they owed us a token of gratitude. Oh, I didn't know it's nothing. Yeah, you helping people out of the goodness of your heart. Even though you might die doing it, is that something your sheriff Rick taught you? Number 9. Taking out walkers with her hands tied If we give the governor a show, Woodbury stands down. I don't like it, but it's what needs to be done. We need to make it quiet. When Rick is debating whether he should really turn Michonne over to the governor to ensure the safety of his group, Merle takes the decision out of Sheriff Friendly's hands. The eldest Dixon brother captures her and binds her wrists to prevent her escape. While you'd think that would leave her helpless and exposed, this is Michonne we're talking about. When walkers attack, she uses what's available – herself, her binds, and a post to take out two walkers. Michonne's actions are both brutal and resourceful. So, in a nutshell, Michonne gave us everything we love about a Walking Dead kill in one scene. Didn't ask him to do this little job now, did he? Yeah, because he wants it done. Number 8. Daryl Puts Merle Down Hey, little brother. What the hell? I was just about to haul back at you. What you doing down here? The Dixon brothers had a notoriously complex and rocky relationship long before the outbreak. Their twisted bond comes to a sad and satisfying conclusion in this sorrowful life. In the episode, Merle finds good within himself and attacks the governor and his troops alone. Unfortunately, he doesn't survive his solo mission. I ain't gonna beg. I ain't begging you. No. After Merle turns into a walker, Daryl arrives on the scene and finds his brother making snacks out of the governor's troops. The youngest Dixon sibling is barely able to look at his older brother before anger takes over. Daryl eliminates his reanimated brother in a fit of rage and sadness. To this day, fans still get choked up while watching Merle's extremely emotional end. No one can make it alone now. Never good. Number 7. Carol's Fireworks We need to set off our charges all at the same time to confuse the dead ones away. That's good for you, too. No, it isn't. There's a herd heading toward Terminus right now. We don't want to confuse them away. The Walking Dead is no stranger to dispatching walkers in explosive ways. How can we forget when Rick blew up a bridge to take out a horde? However, the explosion at Terminus managed to leave an even bigger impact. After Carol spent time away from most of Rick's group, she discovers they were captured by horrific enemies. She takes it upon herself to completely dismantle the complex and free her friends. Carol starts her rescue mission with a bang by shooting a gas tank and using a firework to blow up the barriers. Sound like a bomb. Oh, sounds like a damn war. Right there. The awesome explosion took out quite a few walkers and allowed a bunch more to storm the compound. Carol's explosive and badass actions saved Rick and his crew from horrific fates. Did you do that?
Number six, Glenn gives a walker the chair. You don't even know why you're here, do you? I didn't mean you no harm. Taking care of the undead is difficult enough when your hands are tied. But imagine dealing with one while you're duct taped to a chair. While Glenn is captured and restrained by the governor, he gets an unwanted visit from a walker. All righty. I want to imagine how I felt fighting my way off that roof. He is quickly forced to get creative to prevent himself from getting bitten. Glenn uses everything in his surroundings to keep the walker at bay while his hands are still bound. When he's finally able to smash the chair and get his hands free, he uses a piece of the chair to finish it off in an incredibly satisfying moment. The tense and hopeless nature of this scene made Glenn's triumph that much sweeter. So what, he won't break? Say where his people are? He's a tough son of a bitch. Pick that walker apart in minutes. Number five, Rick shows us how the world works. It wasn't a man. You shot him in the street out front, a man. For him, you need glasses, it was a walker. At the beginning of The Walking Dead's groundbreaking first episode, Rick is making a routine run for gas. Suddenly, he spots a mysterious blonde figure picking up a doll. Rick quickly tries to convince her that he's not a threat. Don't be afraid, okay? Little girl. However, it turns out she's more dangerous because she's turned into a walker. Although Rick doesn't want to put down an undead figure that seems to be around the age of his own son, he takes swift and decisive action. This ambitious scene was a tremendous way to establish the grim tone and tough decisions that would define the show. Rick taught us that you have to ignore whoever the walker was before and take them down if you want to survive. Bites kill you. The fever burns you out. But then after a while, you come back. Number four, a fiery conclusion. Nah, get them all together. Won't have to lead them away. Shortly after the city of Alexandria is overrun with walkers, the survivors are forced to fight tooth and nail against an impossibly large horde. But Daryl executes a plan that will give his friends a chance to turn things around. After dumping gas into the pond, Daryl sets it alight with an RPG and draws most of the surrounding walkers to their fiery demise. <laughs> Not only is this an amazingly smart way to turn the tide, it also directly leads into one of the show's best scenes. Upon seeing the flaming lake, every Alexandrian survivor that can use a weapon rallies and comes together to protect their city by eliminating every walker in sight. We can beat them. We can beat them. Number 3. Daryl's Chain Daryl has an impressive mastery of weapons. From crossbows, knives, and firearms, this man can fight with pretty much whatever he picks up. One of Daryl's most impressive improvised weapons made him go full Ghost Rider. While Daryl and Aaron are tracking a mysterious man, they get caught in a wolf trap and are engulfed by walkers. After crawling under trailers to maneuver around them, the two begin fighting with whatever they can find. Daryl uses a chain to take out three zombies in one swing. Oh, come on. He was such a natural with the chain that we started to suspect he had practice. Are we sure Daryl hasn't secretly been the Ghost Rider the entire time? A mercy. Sorry. All out of mercy. Number two, Rick and Michonne's explosive drive. This is for a herd. That's why it's a steel cable. It's not just for one walker, it's for a lot. When a walker horde approaches while the group is preoccupied, the survivors are forced to act fast before they're overrun. Rick and Michonne decide to jump into some cars with a large steel cable attached between them. They proceed to speed towards the horde and take out as many as they can. Since the show wasn't satisfied with the insane amount of walkers that were eliminated, the scene ends with a bang. After the survivors reach an escape car, they ride away while dynamite they left behind gets ready to blow. The resulting explosion takes out even more members of the Horde. Although the steel cables and dynamite didn't take out all of Rick and Michonne's enemies, they still gave us a spectacular walker slaying scene. I pushed it. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Fire Hose Eugene puts a fire engine's water cannon to good use. Rolling Logs Rick flattens some walkers, Donkey Kong style. Michonne slices her way to Herschel. Michonne cuts down any walker that tries to stop her from saving Herschel. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Carl Shoots Shane So this is where you plan to do it. It's a good place as any. Rick and Shane's increasingly volatile relationship came to an end with this historic scene. An unhinged Shane tries to take out Rick and take control of the group of survivors. But Mr. Grimes foils this power grab by eliminating his former best bud with one swift blow to the chest. Carl arrives just in time to see the aftermath and seemingly points his gun in Rick's direction. No. You should be back home with Mom. Unbeknownst to the cop, Shane has reanimated behind him. But before the newly minted walker can hurt anyone, Carl ends the problem with one shot. This scene's intense buildup, surprising twist, and iconic ending provided the series with its most memorable walker kill. That's why I need you. No more kid stuff. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.